one mic. I need this one mic. It's just different. One mic with Big Mike. The overall tenor of, of what he's saying is very stupid. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. Maybe it's not racism. Maybe it's placism. Brother has to know his place. Right, Bob? One mic with Big Mike. Things aren't always what they seem. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limit. Don't just tell me that the reason something's being done is because that's the way it's always been done. Because the first thing I'm going to say to you is slavery. And now, your host. I got the big homie here who needs no introduction. Big Mike. All I need is one mic. What up? Welcome to a hump day edition of the One Mike with Big Mike show here on Spreaker.com as well as the Spreaker app and my website, One Mike with Big Mike.com. And just recently added to BlastFi.com, B L A S T F I.com, and TuneIn.com. Well, I don't know if it's .com, but TuneIn, the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. So I'm there, here, and I'm everywhere, man. Appreciate you guys. Joining me for the hump day edition of the show. Don't forget to also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Also, I think I'm streaming live right now. It says I'm streaming live. I'm streaming live on my Facebook page. It's facebook.com backslash uh, one mic with big Mike. O N E M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Same as the other ones, just spell out the number one in the beginning. O N E instead of the number one. Also, don't forget if you guys don't get a chance to stick around for the entire two hour extravaganza here, <laughs> you guys can always uh, catch the archived ep- episodes of the show. Not only this one, but every show that I've done going all the way back to November. Man, it's been that long. Um, of this particular <laughs> of this particular venture uh you can go to once again spreaker or the spreaker app if you go ahead and download that on your smartphone or your tablet or whatnot you can also get them via uh, blast fi via tune in itunes youtube uh the iheart radio app as well so plenty of different platforms that you can get your hands on the best kept secret in sports talk which is, of course, the One Mike with Big Mike show. Also, don't forget to sound off. Use my sound off line, man. I don't take calls during during the show, but what I have done is found a way to kind of uh, meet you guys halfway in that regard. You can call 678-568-9011 any time of day, 24 hours, and uh, leave a message. You got to let it ring a couple times. I do not know how to just have it go straight to the voicemail, but... Either way, just let it ring a couple times. Leave me a message, you know, regarding whatever you want to talk about. If you want to talk about Devin Hester being cut, which I don't know why anybody would want to talk about that. Or if you want to talk about anything going on in the world, the Democratic National Convention, if you want to ask a question. Uh, speaking of questions, if you want to ask some questions about fantasy football, now would be the time. I'm going to have my fantasy guest from Sporting News. He's a fantasy expert. Let me say that. From Sporting News, Matt Latopsky. He'll be on with me tonight and we're gonna kick it and get some get some pre-draft strategies the one mike with big mike.com just the one mike with big mike fantasy league is wide open for you and yours all you gotta do send me an email containing your email <clears throat> to mike at one mike with big mike.com make sure you put fantasy in the subject line and what i do is i send you a link and you guys can join the one mike with big mike uh fantasy league as well and you know i have some some giveaways for the winners and all i doubt if i win but you know whoever wins i I got some i got some um some some snapbacks some new era snapbacks that have never been worn some hawks some braves you know a hats like the one i'm wearing right now i'll uh, i'll ship out to the people who who uh who win the league and by that time i should have the uh the one mike with big mike t-shirt as well so you'll get hooked up it ain't it ain't just for free or just for fun. You know, we're going to do it like that. The, the draft is going to be the uh, Sunday following the last preseason game is how I usually do my draft so that everyone who's going to get hurt before the season is hurt, everyone who's going to get cut is cut, and you got you got a full uh, full glance or overview of the entire, you know, the entire available rosters in the NFL. All right, let's see if it, oh, also, make sure I do it. Me and my man, Rob Calloway, we had a conversation today. By the way, we caught, <laughs> we happened to catch two of our uh, 
of our former co-workers. Maybe I shouldn't have said our. I should have said me and left him out of it. Anyway, we <laughs> yeah, man, some damn, uh, some of our former co-workers creeping, man. Yeah, man, on a Sunday at another at another radio station. Uh, apparently, usually when that happens in the radio, for you guys that don't know, that means somebody's about to, some, some cats is about to try to jump ship. And the place that they were creeping to, Rob and I both used to work at. <laughs> so we, we've seen it go down. We've seen those late night meetings and those weekend meetings with talent from other radio stations. And then two weeks later, <laughs> they're working there. Yeah, so I did the bad guy thing that I do today. I tweeted out. I tweeted to those dudes that I knew what they did last Sunday or something like that. I added them in, in, in a not in a tweet in, a, in an Instagram post because I'm petty that way. <laughs> um, speaking of Rob Calloway, man, make sure y'all check out his website, uh, sportsnewsandbrews dot com. Um, it's like a good drink. You know everything that you need to know about the the website is in the title: sports, news, and brews for you for you beer drinkers. So go ahead and check that out. Um, he's the guy who's going. I put him to work too. He's going. He's going to come up with our question of the day. And our question um, of the day today is a brand new thing we're doing. Renee don't even know about this. Um, is uh, who you think is going to be the, the breakout fantasy player this year? Since we got our guy Matt Latovsky on today, who do you think is going to be the, the fantasy breakout player of uh, of this year, the twenty sixteen seventeen season? And I I ask Matt that same exact question. Uh, as usual today, we're going to do on this day. We'll do it at our at its normal time, since Matt's going to come on at eight o'clock. We were supposed to talk to R and B singer, actor, Grammy nominated, you know, um, Cat and Tank today, but he had some scheduling issues. I think the issue was just me. <laughs> you know, he found out that I was working my ass off this morning and hitting my crunches like hella hard, and he knew he couldn't compete today, so he's going to try to come back another day when he was on his. You know, the way I was on mine today. So we try to reschedule the whole tank situation. Don't come on and talk about the uh, upcoming new edition biopic. I, I read last night. I thought it was going to be like just a movie, but it's like a three day situation. They had to break that joint up into like a mini series, probably because all them damn commercials BET run. You ever try to watch Martin on the weekend? Right. The, like they, they run Martin like in, in 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 consecutive blocks on the weekend. That's the only time I look at BET. But then they run like. 15 minutes of commercial that's why the, that's why the show never starts at like four o'clock like martin starts at like four twelve because of the previous episode these huge blocks of commercials it's so weird that's probably why they got to break this damn new edition thing up into like three days because because of that but anyway we'll do on this day the bottom of the hour this is my daily segment where i take a look back and give you guys some from fact toys and tidbits some historical things that happen in the world of sports and by the way if you uh if you got a company you like to get some exposure for your company, you can sponsor on this day. I do it every day, so you know you can be the title sponsor on this day brought to you by, you know, so and so's hair weaves, barbecue and knee high socks or whatever. You know what I mean? Um we got some NFL news, a lot of NFL news to talk about today. <laughs> we gotta talk about the Olympics, man. The uh, the, the reporters are uh, the reporters are are reporting, I guess, to the Olympics. They're arriving in Rio. So now we're getting to hear like the confirmations of the horror stories that we've been that people have been alluding to leading up to the Olympics. I think it's like nine days away. What, August fifth, right? August fifth, the Olympics start, man. Um also August fifth, my, my guy Deshaun Tate's gonna start his podcast right here on Spreaker. Uh Tate's Tate's take podcast so y'all check that out as well see i don't have no problem man like you know shouting my people out man speaking of uh right before the show man i, I got a chance to meet and talk to some dudes uh cats what is it cats talk wednesday on, on blog talk just did just did a segment with them on their show man so shout out to those du- those dudes man i appreciate them for uh having my ignorant ass on i hope i didn't hope i didn't dumb the show down too much <laughs> you know, my my special brand of ignorance but yeah man shout out to those dudes for for extending that uh Extending that invite to me, man. Um, there I am again, man. Uh, also, um, let me make sure. Oh, subscribe to my YouTube page. Really, I always forget to do that. Subscribe to my YouTube page. Go to YouTube and search for one mic with big mic dot com or just one mic with big mic and um, subscribe to the situation. However you do that, subscribe to my YouTube page. All right. <clears throat> Before I get into all the sports things, this has been kind of like a running theme. Not purposely, but it just happens to happen that way. So today, um, Freddie Gray, the kid that was killed 
up in Baltimore after being arrested and riding in the back of the paddy wagon and then showing up dead. Um, that's kind of the Cliff Notes version of the of the scenario. Well, there's six officers that were uh, indicted and charged with his death. Well, a couple of them were acquitted, and I think after a couple of them got acquitted, the state was just like, you know what, effort they dropped the case. So today, everybody's going home except Freddie Gray. Everybody's going home, man. Um, and let this, please, please, let this be a cautionary tale, man. You know, our parents used to always talk to us about what uh, counting your chickens before they hatch. You know, that day, that day just sticks in my mind. That day, when when that 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 um, what she what is she the district attorney? That black lady was standing on the, on the courthouse steps and she was talking about getting justice for Freddie because the officers had been indicted. And you know, me, I'm not a lawyer. You know, I ain't even staying a Holiday Inn suite last night. But I watch enough TV, and I've seen enough of these things go the opposite way to know that when you're trying to put six people, get six people, not just police, six people, period, who who came in, in, in contact with another person at at least three or four different times to be responsible for the same incident, that's a hard case to pull, man. And so while all while all them folks was dancing in the streets and people was 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 tweeting and then Facebook and finally finally what nothing the same thing ended up happening. Like I, I keep on call me when somebody get an L, man. When they were like, you know what, this is murder, life. Call me when that happened. You know what I mean? Because at, at this rate, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna tell y'all what I know to be true. Like people, people who engage in bad behavior don't just regress because because they feel like it. You know what I mean? Like slavery didn't end because because Abraham Lincoln felt bad about it. Nah, because the whole time they was fighting, he had slaves in his crib. Nah, it was about expansion, man, and moving moving the country forward. There was a there was a financial benefit involved. I wasn't because nobody felt bad. <laughs> nah, because ain't nobody feeling bad about making no money. So the same thing goes in this situation, man. Cops ain't gonna stop killing black kids and killing innocent people if there's no if there, if there's no ramifications to your actions. You know what I mean? If somebody just opened up a a a, a, a safe in a in a bank and was like, "Look, we don't go home. We don't go home for ten days. You stay here and don't touch nothing." But if you do touch something, don't even worry about it. We'll just, you know, we'll just we'll just blame it on ourselves. Of course, you're gonna take as much as you can. Speaking of taking as much as you can, uh, yeah, this may be the last show ever for the one mic with Big Mike show. I just look, I'm gonna put them up on the screen here. See these, see these here, these Powerball tickets. Yeah, as soon as one of these hit, yeah. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> now, you know what? If I if I'm real about it, if I'm honest about it, I probably won't be. You know, to be honest, I, I probably won't be. You know what I mean? Because I like doing this. I like it's, it. It serves a, a, a couple of different purposes for me, but it won't be as consistent. <laughs> I'll say that there'll be there's plenty of things I need to do with. What is it? Five hundred million dollars? Yeah, it's a couple things I need to, or whatever the payout is. There's a couple things I need to take care of. Before you know y'all, y'all see me again sitting in this chair. It, it ain't gonna be this chair either way. <laughs> it's gonna be on some real stuff by that time. Anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned the, the Freddie Gray situation. Um, it's the one Mike is Big Mike show here. Spreaker dot com, the app for Spreaker. Make sure you guys are signing up for your free Spreaker accounts as well, um, and then following my show. Just search for the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. And then search for my show while you're listening. And while you're listening, either via Spreaker, uh, the app, or my website, OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Click on that little thought bubble. You'll get inside the live interactive chat room. If you're one of those people who play fantasy football, you're going to want to get your questions in. You know, if you didn't call the, the sound offline, you can still get your questions in via my live interactive chat room. Just come on in. Uh, say what up to I Am No Do. Say what up to Renee. And then post your questions in at the top of the hour when my guy Matt Latovsky from the Sporting News comes on. We're going to hit him with some questions. We're going to get ready for, for our drafts. And we're going to see who he's got ranked where. 
you know, see who will be better this year than they were last year, see what rookies are going to contribute. You know, I don't think a lot of rookies contributed last year. Mari Cooper comes to mind immediately. But um, so apparently, apparently there's no live stream on Facebook today. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm pumped. I'm just saying it's streaming right now on my, on my on my thing here on the little. Let me. OK, I'll do it again. Renee is telling me there's no there's no stream going. So I'll stop it and I'll start it again. <laughs> there it is. Streaming live is what it says, Renee. If I'm reading it properly, it says streaming live. So there. <clears throat> All right. Back to what I was saying about your fantasy football questions. Go ahead and get them in, man. Um, now, as far as the real football goes, there was something that I didn't, I don't think I mentioned on, on Monday. And for whatever reason, just kind of like, you know, skipped my mind. Um, apparently, Peyton Manning, take this for whatever you want to take it for. Peyton Manning has been cleared of... Uh, I don't even want to call them because they weren't elegant. Like people keep saying that that the, the, that Al Jazeera alleged Peyton Manning used a uh, uh, growth hormone, human growth hormones, HGH. But that's not what happened. If you watched the, if you watched the documentary, what you would have seen is they interviewed a dude on hidden camera named Mike Sly or Charles Sly, excuse me, named Charles Sly, and <clears throat> he mentioned Peyton Manning's name. He, he mentioned that they would the, the, the clinic that he worked at would send uh, HGH to his Florida home to his wife. Now, it's the same time where Peyton Manning was going through neck surgery after neck surgery and trying to come back after missing that year. So yeah, everything seemed about right to me. Like, yeah, of course, I would, I would have too if I was him. You know what I mean? That being said, he also... Um, he denied it vehemently, of course, and then it became this whole thing about un, un, unprofessional journalism. It's like one of those things, like, you don't have to really vet the source. The source is freely giving the information on hidden camera. It's not really one of those things where you have to, like, vet. Like, everything he worked there, all those things he was, he was, he was, uh, the, the product was available to him. But now, of course, the NBA, the NFL, excuse me, has come in and said, you know, we found no no wrongdoing we have we haven't found any evidence to support peyton manning using it. and i look at this and i say to myself like if i'm them other dudes if i'm julius peppers and clay matthews and and james harrison who haven't talked to the nfl yet they they've sent signed and sworn affidavits but they haven't spoken to them yet affidavits which the nfl has said we ain't taking this <laughs> we gotta talk to you if i'm them i'm i'm like man this stuff just the setup dude because peyton manning didn't go through he didn't go through the uh, Players Association, because he's not a player anymore. He just, you know, talked and, and sat down and talked with him himself, he and his wife. If I'm James Harrison and these boys, nope, I still ain't talking to you. You know, I'm going to let the Players Association handle it, which is what they're doing. But I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get set up by by you making it look like, look, man, there's nothing to see here. You know, we just, we talked to Peyton Manning. It was painless. You know, nothing happened. See, that's all we want to do with y'all. Nah, good. I'm so good on that. You know, I gave you my my sworn signed affidavit. If that's not good enough, well, uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna move on <laughs> from this. I'm, I'm gonna keep playing because there can't be like I don't I don't see where in any other league that would be a thing where someone does a documentary where someone else, someone just just this dude who's a nobody says a person's name, and now you got to investigate it. Yeah, man. Like the NFL be putting on way too much. And by the way, I got another story about another lot he done got caught in and then scapegoated somebody again today <laughs> about this concussion thing. It's like they don't understand, man. They gon they they, they want to keep this lie going and every lie begets another lie begets another lie begets another lie. And it, I guess they feel like I guess they're at the point where, well shoot, we can't go back now. Yeah, there's an article that came out today from the New York Times, man, that's talking about these falsified numbers and falsified claims by by uh, the NFL as it relates to their their heads up program. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, Richard Sherman speaking. He spoke with the undefeated and he said some very um, interesting things about about the Black Lives Matter situation. And, you know, it, you always know when you always feel like somebody's time is eventually coming. You know what I mean, like like Paul Mooney calls it your N word wake up call. 
you know, like OJ had his and 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 Bill Cosby had his N word. When you when they remind you of what it is, and sometimes it don't come from white people. Sometimes it comes from black people that remind you who you are. And I'm not saying that Richard Sherman has any type of you know uh, a doubt of who he is, but he says some things that I know. I know the brothers ain't gonna like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because, like, I've been attacked on certain levels with the, with the perception, with there being a perception of feeling the way he feels. He's actually said some things. Um, I want to talk about Antonio Brown, uh, Randy Gregory. I talked about weed on Monday, and Randy Gregory is another guy who's um, in the NFL in that in that tumble that dryer of the NFL drug policy, and it, it's it's so weird. Um, speaking of that, Le'Veon Bell says. <laughs> it's, Le'Veon Bell thinks he has an excuse for missing those drug tests and why he won't be suspended. It's hilarious. Like these dudes are, they they own one today. Him, Alden Smith, they own one today. I don't have any any audio to the Le'Veon Bell thing. I only have the 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 um, the article because I think he he either tweeted it or something like that. And I found out some very interesting things about a guy who who people hold in very high regard, man. Uh, Jim Brown, you know, I, I constantly and a lot of times say on this show that no one is one thing. And so many times we like to put people in these comfortable, these comfortable categories, these categories that are comfortable for us and these, and give them these labels. He's a hero. He's this or that and the other. When in reality, people are flawed. You know, people are flawed, some, some more than others. But just by nature, people are flawed. And uh, this article today on Jim Brown, I sat here and I just read the whole thing and part of my mouth was open, man. Not that I couldn't believe it. It's because I couldn't believe that this it doesn't get the things about him don't get brought up. And I'm not like, I'm not that dude. It's like because someone did something so long ago, it's a, it's a smear campaign for somebody to bring it up now. Hell no. Like if Bill Cosby rape, not if Bill Cosby raping them broads. In the whatever, 70s and 80s, it ain't never too late. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it ain't, you don't get to tell somebody when to get over it. I saw something today. I guess somebody told Michelle Obama, one of those Fox News people, to get over slavery. That ain't your, that ain't your bag, B. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not your bag to tell nobody when to get over anything that they're, they're traumatized about. So nah, you know, you're, well, they need to let that Bill Cosby stuff go. You must be out your damn mind. You know why? Because it wasn't your mama, your auntie, or your sister that he did it to. Yeah, miss me with that. So this Jim Brown thing, to me, I think it's going to be very, very, um, it, it's very, very intriguing. And I'm, I'm going to hopefully get a chance to hit on it in the um, in the second segment of the show. Um, it's the One Mike with Big Mike show here on Spreaker.com. Uh, did I mention I'm going to talk about the Olympics? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, God. Why even still have these things, man? Because at this point, no one wins. The people in these countries that they're having them in, they're poor. The, 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 the governments are going further into debt to put on this big elaborate show for, uh, for a couple of weeks every summer or every, or every other summer or every other winter or whatever, you know what I mean, every other every couple of years. You get what I'm saying. And a lot of times there's countries that can't financially sustain these things. Like Rio is poor as hell, man. You know what I mean? Why, what's really good? Why? Like uh, it's very obvious that people don't want it. I mentioned on Monday, you got people that just looking outside of their 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 you know their, their their ghettoized homes at these big monstrosities, these big technically advanced buildings or, or or venues, and they don't even have proper you know heating or lighting or electricity. Which well, as far as things are right now, the people who are showing up there don't have it, have it either. It's just uh, like I'm I'm just not a a traditionalist. Like you, you hear me say it in the in the open of the show, right? The the excuse for doing something just can't be because that's the way it's always been done. That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Because I believe in evolution. I believe things should change. I be, believe things should grow. And sometimes you grow out of things. You know what I mean? The Olympics started off. Uh, I think it was with all it was all male, 
and they competed in the nude. Wrestling and everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, things changed, didn't they? And at some point, sometimes you just get rid of it. There's certain things within the Olympics that have been gotten rid of. Girls softball. Female softball, maybe, is what it's called. Women's softball? I don't know. One of the two. Yeah. It wasn't viable anymore, so they got rid of it. Well, they said because the, the American women were beating the hell out of girls like over and over and over again. No one had, no one could win. I Again, that's a stupid reason, too. You know, get be better. Like, do be better. If not, keep taking his ass whooping. It's very simple. Speaking of taking ass whooping, did y'all see that uh, that that Team USA situation yesterday? <laughs> when them dudes, it's like, like, yeah, man. And then, like, today people are like, they shouldn't do that. They're representing America. And, like, look at who is the Republican nominee for president. Right. And how many people are following him and hang like to to tell me that these bros going out there and doing three sixties in traffic <laughs> like, like a video game on Chinese cats is disrespectful. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Like we live in a society that's full of bravado and full of like, look how great I am and telling people how how awesome I am. When you really are, I approved. <laughs> when it's just, when it's not just talk, you know, when DeMar DeRozan can just rise up on some Chinese cat while doing a 360 as he tries to take a charge or go vertical or something crazy. Yeah, my only my only problem was that he didn't bang on that Chinese cat. That's it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, turn on your TV or something. It's, it's everywhere. DeMar DeRozan tries to 360 on this dude. On just like a baseline attack. It's not even in the open floor. <laughs> he just like rises on this dude. And twirls at the same time. Like it's and one time. The mixtape. Yeah I'm all about that life. Now full disclosure. I probably won't participate. And watch a lot of. You know Olympic men's Olympic, Olympic basketball. You know I don't like watching bad sports. You know if it's not competitive. I can find something on Netflix that'll that'll take up that time. You know, I hear about it and see all the highlights and stupid highlights on on Sports Center. You know what I mean? Um, I like to watch the track, you know, the track and field, women and men. I like to watch, you know, people move at that rate of speed because I don't think it's natural. <laughs> it, it feels it, it just looks weird when someone's running. A human being is running at thirty miles an hour. You know, it's just it's freaky to me. And like the the high jump and. Um, this is this is a little black girl that's in the Olympics. I'm gonna check that out. I, I thought the Olympics was all about like Gabby Douglas, but apparently there's this other chick that's like they calling her the Michael Jordan of Olympics of of, of gymnastics or whatever. I saw her profile on, on ESPN this weekend. And I saw it today as well, man. Um, so I'm all about that. Like apparently her mom was like a drug addict, and her grandma and them, her grandma and grandpa took took her and her sister in uh, and legally adopted them, and then she became like this awesome ass. Uh, gymnast yeah i'll check that out and the other thing that i'm definitely checking out and fellas you got to get there early for this the puerto rican volleyball team not the beach one i don't know i haven't seen them so maybe them too but i haven't seen them but the ones in the gym the puerto rican volleyball team get they're not good the last time i saw them they weren't good so if you don't catch it early they'll be out of the tournament <laughs> or whatever it's called but yeah catch that early you won't you'll you'll thank me later. Please believe. It's the one Mike's Big Mike show. I'm gonna take a quick break here and come back. And I wanna talk about uh I'm gonna get into this Richard Sherman situation. Um, you know, here we are talking about Freddie Gray, the Freddie Gray case being over. You know, it's over and no one no one apparently is responsible for this man's death. <laughs> this healthy young man is now dead and no one's responsible for it. So um in the, in the wake of that, in the wake of everything that's been going on, I want to talk about some of the things that Richard Sherman said uh, to ESPN's The Undefeated in the article. It's it's very very eye like eye raising, and I'm not I don't I don't agree I didn't agree with a lot of stuff Richard Sherman said, but people thought I was crazy. You know what I mean? Like when he's talking about the N word is code for thug or no sorry, in reverse, <laughs> thug is a code word for the N word. I don't know, dude. I think I thought Richard was in his feelings on that, and uh, I didn't agree with him. You know, because we 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 lauded 
Tupac for putting thug life on his chest. And we always talk about somebody thugging their way through something. You know, I think he reached on it. and But people people latched on, you know, because it, it seemed like it was right. But I didn't agree with that. And I don't, I, I don't, I'm not going to agree with what, I, what I'm going to tell you guys about after the break. It's one mic with Big Mike. Heard on Spreaker, BlastFi, tune in, and my website, one mic with onemicwithbigmike.com, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7 o'clock. Make sure you guys use my sound offline as well, 678-568-9011. I got Matt Latovsky from Sporting News coming up at 8 at the top of the hour to talk to us a little bit about fantasy football and what we should be getting our minds wrapped around as we get prepared for drafts and these things. Uh, also, at the end of the on the other side of the break, I'm going to do on this day my daily look back into the annals of sports. We'll do all that next, right here on One Mic with Big Mike. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037 so he can spend it on things like anti gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting, Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right, but don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, Let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cool time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And now back to One Mic with Big Mike. And here we go! Two, two, then a three, three into the four, then you gotta. Welcome back to the Hump Day edition of the One Mic with Big Mike show here on Spreaker.com, S P R E A K E R.com. Oh, he dropped that on me. <laughs> yeah, a little, little N word for your ear hole today. <laughs> also heard on Blastfly. I'm also on TuneIn. And my website, one mic with big mike.com, live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7. Also, catch me. Um, I guess everything's working well now on my Facebook page. I'm streaming live video on Facebook Live. My page is facebook.com backslash O N E M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. One mic with big mike. Also, if you don't get a chance to hang out for the entire show, don't worry. Everything is archived, man. Everything is archived on YouTube, uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, as well as on TuneIn, BlastFi, uh, Spreaker, the Spreaker app, and my website, one mic with big com. So it's all there for you. And make sure you guys are signing up for the uh, One Mic with Big Mike Fantasy Football League this year. Apparently, we also have, as far as giveaways go, not just uh, apparel, some signed footballs. Wait, signed by who? It's like like football signed by you know like like Jerome Taylor, a dude who was on the practice squad for the Falcons like seventeen years ago and never, you know, Gilbert Renfro. <laughs> He's the actual dude. Actually, I, I was trying to think of somebody who's like irrelevant as hell. Like Gilbert Renfro. Who are these, who are these footballs signed by? 
We're going to find that out, and I'll let you know. Um, until then, we got to get into this conversation about this Richard Sherman conversation because there, there's, there's a lot of things to be to be gained and to be understood by that. Oh, Super Bowl champion Cato June is going to sign a football for us. He's, he's a running backs coach over at uh, uh, one of those black schools. Which one is it? Howard? Hampton? <laughs> Which one is it? Um, yeah. And uh, Todd T.J. Duckett, former Michigan State standout, and uh, Atlanta Falcon. Yeah, man. So that's that's big stuff, man. Get some 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 gear. We're doing big things around here, man. Renee Cooper's like my guy Rob. And I'm gonna get to this in a minute. My guy Rob was like was all, like all over Renee today, man. He's like, man, she got you popping, man. You're gonna be talking to Tank. Oh, by the way, if you're tuning in, <laughs> if you're tuning in and you're looking for Tank, uh, R&B singer Tank, no Tank today, ladies. Sorry, you're gonna just have to deal with me. But as a plus. I did work out extra hard today, this morning. So if you squint, like if you like squint your eyes real tight, you might just think it's, it's Tank talking to you. You know, just, you know, try to help you out a little bit. But we're going to reschedule that situation. And we'll, as soon as I have the information on when Tank will come on and talk about the new the new edition biopic and some other stuff, um, we'll be sure to let you guys know. But until then, it's time to take a look back. Now, now, now. let's take a look back. <laughs> Day. On this day. Damn it, Renee. I know we're rescheduling. I just told the people that. Ah, Renee is always on my my back. God, she told me today she's going to murder me. This is true. I swear to God. Or whatever. <laughs> on this day in 1921, baseball fan Ruben Berman, not to be mistaken for Chris Berman, who, by the way, guess what? He's leaving ESPN, and as I've predicted for years, the only reason that Tom Jackson was still there all this time is because his man was Chris Berman. Now that Berman's going, guess who else is going first? Old Black Lip TJ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, Reuben Berman sued the New York Giants, claiming he suffered mental and bodily distress after refusing to return a foul ball May 16th at the Polo Grounds. Berman was eventually rewarded one hundred dollars <laughs> yeah i guess in 1921 though that's like prohibition time you can get some some cheap illegal hooch a bunch of it for a hundred bones on this day in 1992 the boston celtic star reggie lewis some of you may not be old enough to remember this but man this was like it was after the lynn Bias situation and reggie lewis he died after collapsing on uh, Brandy's University basketball court during during a practice. He was 27 years old. He's supposed to be the next coming, you know, the next the next evolution of that Boston Celtics franchise, man. And you know, because of his death, of course, it never did materialize. On this day in 1996, right here in the city of Atlanta, uh, the Centennial Olympic Park bombing at the 1996 Summer Olympics uh, kills one and injures 11. Um, that night was crazy. Uh, I had some buddies that was like trying to get me to go down there. Let's go down that same night. And I had this, I had this broad on the hook. You know what I mean? It's like, it was going down that night and I ain't want to miss out. So I told them dudes go without me. And they was trying to convince me and convince me and convince me. Um, later on that night, I get a call, you know, as soon as they stepped off the train, as soon, boom, everything shook. I was like, see, had I let y'all go at the right time. Y'all might have got murdered. I saved, I saved lives that night. On this day in 1996, I saved lives. You're welcome. <laughs> On this day in 2001, Deion Primetime Sanders announced his retirement from the NFL. Well, that was the first one. He ended up coming back in 04 and playing with the Ravens. I remember hearing this dude I used to hang out with. I was like, man, what the hell Deion doing with that heavy-ass number on? He was wearing 37. He was like, man, that number look heavy as hell. <laughs> and, ladies and gentlemen, that is your hump day edition of On This Day. Okay. Absolutely. Now, back to the letter at hand. Don't forget, you can send your fantasy football questions. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can call 678-568-9011 and record a fantasy message. It won't get on the air today, of course, because I have to pull them from my email, which is where the audio file goes. But if you got a question that you want to ask today, I saw some people on Facebook talking about getting ready for their fantasy football leagues and whatnot. Jump on in the live interactive chat room, man. If you're listening via Spreaker 
or the app or my website, onemikewithbigmike.com, you'll see a thought bubble on the streaming player. Just click on that. It'll direct you to the uh, live interactive chat room. You guys can ask your questions there, and I'll pass them on to someone who knows what the hell they're doing. I suck at fantasy football. I used to be pretty good. I got a couple of fantasy championships under my belt, but then, I don't know, real life started happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was like, you know, that commercial, where I, like, set it and forget it. That was my attitude towards fantasy football. Like, I'm the dude that I draft one quarterback and then worry about another one when, when the bye comes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, one dude I'm going to ride with, and then the bye comes, and I'm like, all right, let me go get one of these scrubs. Let me get Teddy Bridgewater or something off of waivers real quick <laughs> for a week and then cut his ass the next week. So I, I don't have to worry about, like, man, who should I start this week and be stressing over it? And then, like, if I don't start him and he end up with 50 points on the bench, nope. <laughs> just one dude all year long last year was matt ryan thus me sucking uh no nah, matt ryan's a cool quarterback but like man he got like after that after that little win streak at the beginning man like what the hell man <laughs> you know what i mean like you got julio jones like i would throw the ball to that dude every time like i know people here in atlanta don't really try to hear that like man they throw the ball to julio too much he's gonna get hurt how can you how can you throw it to that dude too much it's a mismatch, even if it's two dudes. It's a mismatch off rip. But anyway, speaking of the Falcons, before I get into this Richard Sherman situation, Devin, H- Devin Hester, who I was like, he's one of those dudes where it's like, you know how like sometimes you hear about somebody, like somebody mentions it, mentions someone's name, you're like, damn, they still alive? Like I knew Devin Hester wasn't dead, but I was like, he's still on the damn team? Why? Like what the he- what what service is is Devin Hester? To a football team in 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 twenty fifteen twenty sixteen, isn't there? There are no kickoffs barely. If you're the Falcons, you already got two other dudes. You got I don't know if they cut Eric Weems, but I think Eric Weems is still on the team. And Robert Alford returns punts. Yeah, where are you gonna put Devin Hester at? Yeah, whatever. And then let's talk about should Devin Hester be a, a, a Hall of Famer? I was talking to the guys earlier on, on Cats. Golly, what is it called? Cats Talk Wednesday earlier. Um, about like, and, and one of the guys made a comment about like the, the, the Hall of Fame being like this, this tier system. And my guy, Jason Goff, used to talk about it all the time. Like, you have like the Hall of Fame, and mainly this is in basketball where like everybody goes to the Hall of Fame in basketball. Like, Amari Stoudemire just retired, and then it's like a, it's an honest question Is Amari Stoudemire going to be a Hall of Famer? Well, I'm psh, probably as well. <laughs> everybody else is. You know what I mean? Ron Harper is probably in the, in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Who knows? You know what I mean? But in, in football, you know, they're, they're kind of criteria, man. Like, there's one specialist, right? Ray Guy. Ray Guy is the one specialist, and it took him, like, 500 years to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Like, look, my man, you ran back punts. And really, you, you did that because no one knew since your days at Miami. No one knew what position you played. If you, you were running back... Are you a receiver? Are you a DB? He's played all. Well, I use the term played loosely. He's been, he's lined up at all. You know what I mean? And then it got to the point where he held out that year. People forget about that. He held out the year in Chicago to get more money because he was their only offensive weapon as a kick returner. And they were forced to play him at, at like their number one wide receiver. Yep, everything's been downhill since then. Yeah, so yeah, Devin Hester's cut. Uh, trust me, I'll be totally surprised if that dude sees the, sees another another football team. He just doesn't have any value, man. You know, uh, speaking of people, football players into their careers, uh, uh, Terrence Mathis, former Atlanta Falcons, is going to join me. From, former Renan Raider for my people here in the A. Um, he's going to join me on Friday at or scheduled to join me on Friday at seven thirty. Um, I've talked to Terrence Mathis a couple times in my career, and it's like years go in between. You know, almost at every stop I make, I have a conversation with Terrence Mathis for some weird reason, and I always mess with him because his high school don't have no windows in it. Maybe it does now, but you know, for for many many years, it didn't have any windows in it because it was it was designated as a uh, I don't know, like a storm shelter or a bomb shelter or something, so it had no damn windows in it. So kids go to school and. You know, it's like being in, in Guantanamo Bay <laughs> or something. So anyway, we'll talk to him about, you know, something that he said to me a couple of years ago about being a veteran in the league and still wanting to play but not uh, being affordable. You know what I mean? Like the veteran minimum continues to go up and up and up. And 
you know, as your age goes up with it, that 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 balance of value versus worth, I guess, is it comes into play. So Terrence Mathis on uh, Friday, Friday, 730. Mark your mark your calendars for that. Um. Oh, Richard Sherman, Richard Sherman. So Richard Sherman sat down with the undefeated. And it's one of those things We're we're in a time now where people know where to go get their quotes, especially now with the with the racial climate being the way it is right now. Richard, Richard Sherman has said some things over the past couple of years. You know, uh, he's been very, very unafraid to voice his opinion, even if that opinion at times may be a little misinformed or underinformed. He'll speak his mind, you know, and I don't know, take that for whatever it's worth. But he's done it. And he's done it again now. Um, what's the kid's name who he sat down with? The, the kid from Dominic Foxworth. He now writes for the undefeated. The kid used to play uh, DB for the Broncos. Um, in the interview, it, he, he talks about, you know, it starts off talking about, you know, his position on social issues. And, you know, fast forward a little bit. Um, they asked him about something that I've spoken about, you know, how how he feels about white and non-black black players and what their obligation is uh, uh, when it comes to speaking out against social injustice, like police shooting and killing black people. By the way, also, I got to do this real quick. I want to shout out uh, Bamani Jones, man. Like, like me and that dude sometimes are on such the same wavelength on, on, on things, but he's a much more polished and much more articulate uh, human being than I am, and <clears throat> in, in in talking about the uh, the Michael Jordan situation that I talked about on Monday with Michael Jordan, you know, quote unquote stepping out, you know, my position hasn't changed. I, he didn't step out on anything. It's one of those things where very few people are going to be like, "What?" And then he still rode the fence on it. But when Monty talked about like in actual coding, how you know the police officers were killed. But Alton Sterling and Philando Castile died. You know what I mean? He talked about it being an old trick in media, how you, you separate one from the other. When, no, those two men were killed. They were murdered. I keep saying murdered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I take it to the next level. But, you know, guys like him, man, catching stuff like that, I, I, I 100% appreciate that. And I have no problem mentioning it, mentioning it on my show and, and giving kudos, man, because... You know, it's, it's some of those things that you, you see them and, and you, you kind of glaze over them. But it's, it's so, so true, man. These little bitty things that that separate the perception of, of society. You know, while white people don't understand a lot of the things that we we tend to make a bigger deal over. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, it matters when you say someone was someone died. Because if I if I if I stroke out right now. I died. No one killed me. But when when somebody reaches into your car door or shoots bullets into your car window and you bleed out, that's being killed. You know what I mean? And like I say, I go to go the extra step and I call it what I what I in in my heart of hearts feel like it is. It's murder. Uh, Also, don't forget, if you guys want to (laughs) comment on Facebook, do that at your own peril. Facebook dot com backslash O N E. M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Uh, you can comment on the video. I'm streaming live video, so if you guys want to comment, ask your questions about fantasy football or whatever you want to comment on this Richard Sherman thing I'm about to talk about, feel free, and I'll try to keep my eye on it as well. Now, so Richard Sherman is asked about you know whether he feels like white athletes have an obligation, the same as black people. He says, I guess in some respects, just as being humans, we hear a lot about Black Lives Matter, but I think race was created. I think everybody is human first, and then the color of their skin wouldn't matter if nobody told you it mattered, if that makes sense. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Uh, If you don't think, I don't think it's the white player's obligation to speak up. I think it would be nice to show some unity with our league, but truly, it it truly hits home for a lot of African-American players who are from these environments where people get people are getting killed. Now, to me, that's that's talking out of both sides of your, of your, of your neck, as they say. You know what I mean? If if the color shouldn't matter, and we're all one race, well, they damn well should. I, I've been saying this for a couple of weeks now. They damn well should speak out. 
and I, I spoke about it in the in the terms of you know everyone likes to to, to claim family it's my it's my patriots fam it's my falcons fam well some something is deeply affecting the fam- like those girls those those females those women in the WNBA they get it no look at those pictures I posted one on the last episode of my show. Yeah, it wasn't just it wasn't just the black girls up there. And it's seventy percent of them broads, so it could have. It wasn't just it wasn't just black women up there showing how Paul they were they were they were of the ease at which it is to to take a black man's life in this country. It wasn't just them, but you know, turn turn it over to men's professional sports and the expectations as as here being pointed out by Richard uh, Sherman and as being uh, as evidence in which, with what we see. We don't see any of the white. We don't see Tom Brady, Drew Brees talking about these things. And, and the fact that, that they're not expected to, I think is bull. I, I don't think this is a problem that can be rectified by only the people who I don't I don't feel that way about anything you know when it comes to like sexual assault I don't think just women can have a problem with it (laughs) you know what I mean like as men we have to have a problem with it as well for things to change um now (laughs) he's asked about his he's asked his opinion on the black lives matter movement this is awesome (laughs) it's hard to formulate an opinion this is Richard Sherman's uh, answer to the question it's hard to formulate an opinion and generalize because they have several different messages. Some of them are peaceful and understandable and understandable, and some of them are very radical and hard to support. Anytime you see people saying, brace yourselves, <laughs> black lives matter, and then saying it's time to kill police, then it's difficult to, ha- to stand behind that logic. They're generalizing police just like they are asking police not to generalize us. It is very hypocritical. So, in that respect, I find it difficult to support the movement. I stand by what I said. I stand by what I said, that all lives matter. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, let's dissect this because let's go back to front. First of all, once again, all lives do not matter. <laughs> that's, that's, that's false. Um, the fact that all lives matter is a thing only because black lives matter became a thing, that, that I think is what... Um, I don't want to use the word infuriates. That that's what causes the ire in black people. Like you, you're only doing that as a response to something that was created to illuminate a bigger problem: the problem of police killing black people, and now doing it on tape without any retribution, without any repercussions. I should say no re, no repercussions to their actions, and. When, when people start screaming out, you know, all lives matter. Not not in every situation. I think in there was a teacher, you know, that you know she seemed to be very earnestly just saying, you know, like I care about all people, you know. But she she used the phraseology of Black Lives Matter and turned into All Lives Matter, and it was like she has to apologize. I don't think she should have apologized if she felt to do anything, maybe clarify. But I think not having perspective and and not not embracing perspective it's it's such a, it's such a terrible thing that goes on nowadays you know what i mean where we can't understand when someone's just being a jerk or when someone someone's earnestly saying something from their heart and it may come out wrong they may not articulate it properly but they don't mean any harm by it that's a problem um the other thing and very rarely will you hear me defend the black lives matter movement, not because I don't like it or I don't care about it or anything. I just, I don't have, a, I don't have what I what I, what I would consider, consider a working understanding of what it's all about. Like I understand the, the genesis of it in the beginning, but t- today I'm not sure that I have an understanding of what it is. So I'm not, I don't, I don't bash it. I don't, I don't stand up and say, what you, everybody's got to get behind this. I don't do that either. You know, I don't promote it, but the one thing I will do, I don't think anybody, and not to my knowledge, and maybe some of you guys can correct me if I'm wrong or you guys can confirm what I'm saying is true. No one is saying black lives matter. Now let's kill the popo 
You know what I mean? And that, what he's saying is one of the things I warned of at the beginning. When <clears throat> they, they mentioned that kid in Dallas, and with every other sentence, they were associating him with a protest against police. Both things being uh, fundamentally wrong. Like, nobody in Dallas was protesting the police. They were protesting the police shooting black men. That's different. <laughs> you know what I mean? The police who want to shoot black men for selling loose cigarettes and selling CDs or for reaching for the wallet. They're telling you I'm reaching for my wallet, my man. You understand what I'm saying? That's what they were protesting. But when when the narrative is is able to be formulated in a way where they keep telling you this and this is the same thing. This guy who got blown up and was shooting at the police, he is the same thing as these Black Matter Black Lives Matter people. I don't th- I don't think that's right. You know what I mean? So yeah, if yeah, of course if if that was a part of it, it was like Black Lives Matter, now let's go kill the police. Yeah, of course. Any rational person would say, "Yep, I'm out of here. <laughs> I can't be a part of that." Nah. You know what I mean? But you got to be able to separate the two. You know what I mean? Like like again, perspective. Like that kid in Baton Rouge that drove from Kansas City to, to kill those police, that dude in Dallas. Ask me if I understand why. Ask me if I understand the frustration that would drive somebody to that. Yes. Ask me if I condone it. That's two different things. You know what I mean? If I was on a, if I was on a radio station, I definitely wouldn't be able to say that. But uh, whatever, this is my thing. And I'm trusting the people that are listening to this show to be <laughs> to be smart enough to understand that those are two different things. No, I don't want nobody. I don't want no kids growing up without their parents, man. You know, these these men who had nothing to do with these the these uh circumstances in, in Minnesota and in Louisiana. No, nah, I don't want that to happen. But if you ask me if I can understand why somebody would go to those lengths to be heard and to, to have their frustration felt, yeah, I can. I absolutely can. And I think if you if you're a human being, you can do both. You know what I mean? You can say I can understand why, but then still say that it shouldn't they shouldn't. I don't approve of it. You can do both. It's the one mic with Big Mike show. We've got a couple minutes left before the top of the hour. We talked to uh Matt Tilatopsky of the Sporting News about some fantasy football. Hopefully we can get Matt on uh the entire season as well. That's some fingers crossed. I'm gonna talk to him about that after the show. See how he feels about how things go tonight. Um yeah, let me wrap this up real quick. Violence in the black community is a result of institutional racism. That's posed as a question. Um, <laughs> you may not like this either. He says he says a bunch of stuff, and then I highlight this part. We want to blame someone else for black fathers not being there for all these people having all these kids and nobody raising them. We want to say that's systematic. But when do we stop saying it's systematic and move forward and make a difference? See, Richard, what's happening there is... All you're doing is restating the problem. You know, that's like, again, that's like telling telling the victims, like telling uh, uh, Philando Castile's uh, girlfriend or wife or, or or whoever she was to say, just tell her, you know what? It's over. Why don't you just get over it? This absolutely the things, a lot of the things that people, that black people go through in this country are systematic. Look at the prison system. You know, look at look at the the impoverished neighbor, neighborhoods that only get that only get uh, gentrified when it's time to kick those black people out, those poor people out. Look at Flint, Michigan. You know what I mean? Like you you don't even have to know what what people live in Flint, Michigan, what economic level, what education level, what race the the majority of them are. All you gotta do is hear the circumstances. An entire city in America was poisoned with water. You know the end of the question. You know the end of that that circumstance. When I tell you an entire city, a major city in America was flooded and the people were called refugees. You don't even have to know what color most of them were. That's systematic. That's exactly what that is. It's one mic with Big Mike. Don't take a break from the heavy stuff. I don't know why the show has been been so heavy, man. But it is what it is, man. Life happens, man. The world keeps moving, right? So I'm going to take a break. It's the top of the hour. We're going to take a break. Get my man Matt Latopsky on the line. 
And we're going to talk about some fantasy football, man. I got I to gotta get my weight up, man. I don't want to finish last, man. I don't want to be, be the dude that gives up around week you know, 10 <laughs> because I know it's over already. I don't want to be that guy. So we'll talk to him about that right here on Spreaker.com as well as the website, or as well as the app and my website, OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Also, I'm on TuneIn and BlastFi as well, streaming live. If you guys want to jump in on the conversation, you can do so via Spreaker or the website. By clicking on that little thought bubble there, and uh, it'll get you right inside my live interactive chat room where you can ask some questions about your fantasy situation as well. Also, while you're listening, make sure you click that little, uh, that little heart as well so I can get my like situation straight. And subscribe to my YouTube page. And I'm streaming live on Facebook. One mic with Big Mike is my Facebook page, O-N-E-M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. I'll be right back. My name is Dale Pazinski. I'm 19 years old, and this is how I live United. I've always been kind of a computer geek, and I found a way to use those skills to help the homeless in my community. For people facing hard times, computer skills and a basic resume are so important. It may seem like a small thing, but it makes a huge difference in people's lives. So with United Way, I created a program where I work with the homeless. Together, we go through their whole job history, write a resume, and then save it on their very own USB drive. We provide workbooks and training certificates. I even budgeted for cupcakes so we can celebrate as a class when one of our people gets a job. That's huge. When somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. That's what Living United feels like to me. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. Feedthepig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You going to finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... (laughs) Sometimes, though. (laughs) You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman. Let's break for lunch. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. One mic. One mic. One mic. I need this one mic. It's just different. One mic with Big Mike. The overall tenor of, of what he's saying is very stupid. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. Maybe it's not racism. Maybe it's placism. Brother has to know his place. Right, Bob? One mic with Big Mike. Things aren't always what they seem. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limit. Don't just tell me that the reason something's being done is because that's the way it's always been done. Because the first thing I'm going to say to you is slavery. And now, your host. I got the big homie here who needs no introduction. Big Mike. All I need is one mic. Welcome back to the second half for the hump day edition of the one mic. With Big Mike Show here on Spreaker.com, the app, as well as my website, one mic with bigmike.com. You can also hear the show live on TuneIn and Blastify.com. It's something like a syndicated situation, if you feel me. Um, also, I'm streaming live video right now on uh, YouTube, not YouTube, what is this called? Facebook Live. My Facebook page is Facebook.com backslash O N E M I C W I T H. B I G M I K E. Uh, don't forget, you guys can still sign up for the One Mike with Big Mike uh, Fantasy Football League. Get your fantasy on with me. We got some giveaways, some signed footballs from some, from some NFL champions and some NCAA greats. Also, some uh, new era uh, 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 snapback hats for you guys. And then by that time, I have the One Mike with Big Mike t shirts as well. So, without further ado, if you guys want to. Uh, turn on over to my Facebook page. You can see this handsome young man that I'm about to speak with. He is a sporting news, fantasy football, and fantasy baseball expert. He is Matt Latovsky, at M. Latovsky on uh, Twitter. Y'all give it up. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, man? Good, man. How you doing, brother? 
I'm doing good. All I right. mean, we're getting closer to the season. Yeah, just, look, I love talking to you dudes, man. You fan, like how many how many leagues do you usually are you usually in uh, during the season? I mean, I, I, I go tame. I, I really have toned it down o- o- over the years, so I think I'm just going to get be in two this year. What? But I mean, I know people in eight. You know, I know people in all sorts. But uh, I just kind of I've toned it way back. And I just focus on the ones I'm in because you get spread so thin if, if, if you're in a bunch. Dude, Jamie Eisenberg used to, used to tell us he was in like 35 leagues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it can get real crazy when everyone comes around asking you, like, oh, just be, and then you find that you're not even paying attention to, to over half of them. And you're like, well, what's the point? I'm doing myself a disservice. I'm doing that league a disservice. So. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna stick to the ones I know and the ones I like. All right. I'm glad I got you one because I'm a guy who needs your help. I'm. I'm gonna keep it real. Uh-huh. Like I'm doing this for the people, but it's really a selfish endeavor because over the last couple of years, I've sucked at fantasy football. Like I've given up in a couple of years. Over the, you know those years where you know you can't get back in and no one wants to trade for you because all your good players are hurt and all you got is bums on your squad. So let's start here. Who? Who are your top 10 guys right now? Because my league is a, is, a, is, a, is a 10-team league. So give me your top 10 guys as we stand right now, as training camps are about to start. Who do you have in your top 10 going 1 from one to 10? Well, you know, I start with Todd Gurley. I think, you know, most really? people, it seems like, Anto- yeah, I think most people go with Antonio Brown 1, and I don't blame them. I think people are sick of taking running backs in the first round and, and those guys busting, getting hurt, whatever. So I think we're going to see, like, a real – revolution this year probably already started but it's going to be even more so this year with just wide receivers and people breaking out and picking a lot of them uh but but antonio browns too to me and then you know i like julio jones then odell beckham you can flip-flop a lot of these receivers in, in any order throw des Bryant in there too uh running backs i got adrian peterson too i still love Devontae freeman i think a lot of people are really down on him we keep hearing stuff from atlanta like oh kevin coleman they want to get him more touches right. this and that Maybe they do, uh, but the bottom line is I just think Devontae Freeman is a really good player, and I think he, he can do a lot with a little, and I think once the season starts, you might have a plan, but when this guy's helping you win, you, you tend to stick with him. Uh, I also think David Johnson's a first-rounder. Of course, Gronk. I'd probably take Gronk around around five. Um, I, I don't think I have no problem taking him, him even, that high. Even with Brady he's missing the first four and Martellus yeah, Bennett I mean, being that, there? Yeah, that that hurts his cause, no question. Uh, more so the Brady thing than Marty B. That 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 part doesn't bother me as mm-hmm. much. Uh, but look, Patriots are smart. They got a system. Who else are you going to throw to? It, you know, in terms of when they need the big plays. I mean, yeah, they got receivers who can catch the ball and do things too. But Gronk's the guy. He's a straw that stirs the drink there. So I'm fine still taking him uh, really high. So I know I didn't give you in a, in a particular order, but no, I think those good. are like the. The ten, the 10 guys I like, and you can basically mix and match whatever order you like. You can take those guys. I think Ezekiel Elliott's going to go in the first round of most drafts. Um, I, I'm okay with that. I'm not usually as high on rookies. I'm a little, uh, you know, a little uh, bearish. I'm like, you know what? If someone else wants to take them, go for it because we just don't know. But certainly he's set up for success there. Uh, our question of the day brought to us by Sports sportsnewsandbrews.com is uh, who do you see breaking out this year? You mentioned Devontae Freeman. I would assume that he's one of the guys that, that broke out in a fantasy fashion uh, last year. Uh, David Carr may be in another one. The kid out of the kid in, um, in, in Jacksonville, Hearns, and Doug Baldwin. Like, who do you see doing those type of things this year, in, in this year's season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always tough uh, to predict, you know, obviously, because there's so many guys. I mean, football is the sport, especially at running back, where it's, it's legitimately guys you haven't heard of. Right. You know, as we sit here talking today, uh, we, you know, we, we have a lot of sleeper lists on, on the website, and we go deep into those rookies, guys who could just as easily get cut as they could make an impact. Wow. You know, one guy I think a lot of people are on, you know, Thomas Rawls in Seattle. We saw him have some big games last year. Now with Marshawn Lynch gone, I think people are, are really high on him. Don't blame him. Jeremy Langford, same thing in Chicago. I'm not quite a, a, as uh, as bullish on him just because of the, John Fox there. He's the coach. They got some other guys who, who could easily you know get carries. There's, there's a couple rookies I, I really like, DeAndre Washington in Oakland, uh, watching him real carefully, and, uh, and Paul Perkins with the Giants. I think they're very, very interesting guys. Another guy, Mike Gillisley in Buffalo, now, he, he was pretty good last year as a backup, 
you know, the, the guy who was the backup last year, Carlos Williams, well, he suspended the first four games. And he's, he's fat. Overweight. Yeah. <laughs> and he's fat, put on some pregnancy sympathy weight, apparently. <laughs> and so, you know, they were the best rushing offense in the league last year. So even though the Sean McCoy is there and he's won, coming off an injury injury prone year, I don't know. That's the type of guy who all of a sudden McCoy gets hurt and, and he could really do something. But, uh, you know, receiver, I think, is always a little bit more of, a, of an interesting position because it could be any guy, but the problem is it's going to go up and down. Guy will be good one week. He won't be good the next week. Right. I really like Sammy Coates in Pittsburgh. I mean, you, you take away uh, um, Martavis Bryant, and everyone kind of thinks, okay, it's going to be Marcus Wheaton, right? Well, we thought that two years ago, and he didn't do anything. Uh, Coates was injured last year, had some problems. The guy's a physical freak. I think he's a guy to really watch this year, and I really want to see how much playing time he gets in the preseason and what he can do. And then you have a, a bunch of second-year guys, including two guys who didn't even play last year, and Kevin White with the Bears and Rashad Perriman in Baltimore, also throwing Devontae Parker at a huge finish last year down in Miami. A couple other second-year guys, may have throwing uh, Doriel Green back on two down in Tennessee. At least one of these guys is breaking out, at least one of them. And, uh, hell, throwing Tyler Lockett, too, in Seattle. And, and a couple of these guys, if we're talking at this time next year, we're going to be talking about them as, you know, top 15 receivers. I wish I knew who. I'd make a lot more money. But uh, <laughs> right. those are the guys I've at least narrowed it down to. Talking right now, sharing the mic with Sporting News draft, ex- or excuse me, fantasy football expert Matt Latovsky. Follow him on social media at M Latovsky. That's spelled L U T O V S K Y. Now, you mentioned uh, Sammy Coates, and earlier you mentioned uh, Antonio Bryant. My question to you is now uh, that, uh, excuse me, Antonio Brown, with Martavius Bryant being out, will one of these guys have to perform in order to, for, for, for Antonio Bryant or Antonio Brown to realize his full fantasy potential? Yeah, I mean, it always helps, right, when there's, a, when there's someone else there to just attract uh, more defensive attention away from people. And a lot of times fantasy owners like to say, okay, well, Odell Beckham Jr. is going to get double teamed, so that's going to leave Sterling Shepard open. Mm-hmm. He's going to have a big year. It sounds great in theory. It doesn't necessarily always happen. But I think you're right in the sense that those secondary receivers have to kind of, you know, help the, the star not get double teamed just as much. But I, in that Steelers offense, I think it's one of the best in the league. And, you know, another guy they added this offseason, tight end Ladarius Green, yeah. who's, uh, you know, been a fantasy key the last couple of years, hasn't really been able to stay healthy. And, and Antonio Gates is sticking on the field more than I think a lot of fantasy owners would have liked. He never really broke out like we, we kind of thought he would. And he had ankle surgery in the offseason, and that's a little bit of a worry. But if he's healthy with Keith Miller gone, you know, you look at that team and you got Brown and you got Coates and you got Wheaton and you got Ladarius Green, and especially early when Le'Veon Bell suspended, I think they're going to be throwing a lot. And that's, that's a situation where, you know, they might have three fantasy-relevant wide receivers maybe even four at any given time. Wow. And uh, it's a situation where I think the fans are going are gonna to really enjoy it. And then, of course, ultimately, it, it's really going to be good for Ben Roethlisberger, who's, who's uh, you know, one, to me, one of the top five or six quarterbacks. Where do, where do you go with quarterback? I, I want to ask you about – well, let me ask you about here in Atlanta. Um, given that, that same scenario you just put forth, Muhammad Sanu is now here. Roddy White's out. Muhammad Sanu is here. We see him – we saw him produce in Cincinnati – under uh, Hugh Jackson's offense, but now coming here, do you see him uh, being a fantasy relevant player with the Atlanta Falcons with their system with Devontae Freeman and of course uh, the monster number eleven Julio Jones being on the other side of him? Yeah, well, I'm not as high on Sanu as, mm-hmm. as a lot of people. I think when you think back to, to Muhammad Sanu's highlights the past couple of years, they were him throwing the ball or him doing something wacky on a gadget play in okay. Cincinnati. There's not a lot of highlights of him making a great catch, quite frankly. And I understand why people would like him or want to like him. Uh, certainly he has some talent. I'm not going to you know, act like he's, he's a nobody or anything like that. But uh, the guy that I'm actually really interested in there is Justin Hardy. Uh, you know, a kid rookie wide receiver. Kid out of ECU, all-time uh, NCAA record holder for right. receptions. I mean, no joke, this guy's got skills and, and – you know, he's really interesting to me. Uh, to me, he fits the Roddy, right, Roddy White role uh, like a little better than Sanu does. Uh, but, again, it's just a situation we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see it in practice and see what their game plan is. Uh, but, you know, obviously Julio's the guy. There's no question about that. He's going to do his thing. Sanu's worth drafting, no question. But to me, he's just a backup. I wouldn't draft him counting 
on Muhammad Sanu being a guy who's going to be in your lineup every week. But to me, Justin Hardy, a guy at the very end of your draft, last couple rounds, throw him, throw him on, throw him, uh, you know, throw him on the team and just see see if he's got it. We got some fantasy studs that are coming off of injury. Uh, I want to get your, your your thought on a couple of guys and and see if if you're on board with any of these guys coming back to some some fantasy prominence. Guys like Dez and Jordy and um, the the kid Benjamin in in Carolina, Alshon, Romo, Flacco, all these guys and guys that are suspended, of course, like Brady. Like how how do you? Oh, I can't forget Josh Josh Gordon, the the ultimate. X factor unknown, the kid who can show up after a two game suspension and lead the entire league in receiving. How many of these guys, and who out of those guys, if any, do you see coming back and, and seeing some of that that past fantasy glory? Well, I'll start. I'll start with Gordon. Uh, you know, obviously a very intriguing, interesting case mm-hmm. um, because you know you mentioned he was gone for two games, and, and you know he did it with with pretty weak quarterback play too, which I. That's have being to deal nice. with this year. Yeah, which I think he'll have to deal with again this year. But man, that's a long layoff. Yeah. That's a tough suspension. That's a bad team. And I mean, look, yeah, I wish him the best. I hope he does have it figured out and keep keeps up a straight narrow. But one thing, right? And he's gone. So he's to me a classic guy when you have your starters, you jump on Josh Gordon, but you don't draft Josh Gordon thinking, all right, in week five I got this guy and he's he's going to be great and I'll worry about my third starting receiver later. I only need to cover it for four weeks. That's a lot. That's 31% of the fantasy regular season. Throw in the bye week, it's even more. So, you know, I'm not too high on him. I'm almost positive in my draft someone else will take him before I do, mm. and that's fine. Uh, the other guys you mentioned, I mean, I'm in on Dez. I'm totally in on Jordy. All those guys, Romo, he's going to be probably the 11, 12 quarterback taken, but that's fine. He's, he's a risk, but when you're drafting a quarterback as late as he's probably going to go, you're probably going to take another quarterback pretty soon after anyway. You're going to take Phillip Rivers or Andy Dalton or Todd Taylor or someone else who could easily be just as good, if not better. So I think Romo, of all those guys, has probably the most upside. So I'm totally fine with him. You know, Flacco, I'm not high on. I've never been high on. He's much more kind of a better real life guy, I think, than fantasy. Um, you know, and, and especially if you look at that offense, and it doesn't look good on paper. Quite frankly, they got they got a few guys who who, who could be nice. Uh, but but those guys, you know, the, the receivers especially, I'm in on those guys. I think they're going to be fine. Uh, and, and unless we get bad reports in, in training camp or you know a setback or something like that, uh, Benjamin is the guy who is the most interesting of the ones you mentioned just because I, w- I really wasn't high on him his rookie year. I just thought this guy's overweight, he's slow, you know, come on. And then he was awesome. And uh, and you got to think he can be good again, and we don't know what Cam can do and what that offense can do. So, again, another guy that probably someone will take before I do in most drafts, but I have no problem with someone taking him to be, you know, a real high-end wide receiver too. Um, you mentioned the quarterbacks. I got a two-part question as a retain. One selfish and just one overall. I'm a dude that I mentioned it before you came on. Um, I, I do this thing where I, I kind of just pick one and just so so I eliminate the decision making process. I I'll, I'll like take one dude and just ride him until the bye week before I have to get someone else. I want to ask you about that strategy, and then I want to also ask you um, how late, how long should someone wait? before they get a quarterback because there's so many of them and you can only play one at a time so how long should someone wait yeah i mean, I, I think that strategy is is the smart way to go really? i only like to use one roster yeah i think so uh <laughs> i only like to use one roster spot on a quarterback but i don't blame anyone for being like well i'm gonna get that second one and i hope i'm gonna hit on the guy who has the monster year kind of what blake bortles did last year or something like that mm-hmm. i mean you, you're going to need a second quarterback at some point in the year if you want to take one fine but a lot of times i'm just like man i'm, I'm eating that roster spot i'd much rather have you know a third string running back who might break out at some point i feel, always feel like that's going to be more valuable it's tough to trade quarterbacks but uh, yeah i try to wait until you know the eighth ninth round it, but it really depends you just got to read your league i mean a lot of leagues you know i play in, in some experts leagues and and a lot of those everyone waits on quarterback like okay. everyone to the point it's silly where it's like why is aaron Rodgers, you know available in the fourth fifth round most most leagues you'll play in like you'll start seeing the first quarterbacks pop off in the second round maybe even the first depending who you're playing with or where you are uh so you know to me you wait 
the ninth quarterback, eighth quarterback, not that much different than the fourth quarterback. They're really not. And and we all know anyone can get injured at any time and, and, and all sorts of other factors like that. But I do, if you are going to wait uh, too long, if you really push it to the end, then you should take two just to kind of cover your bases. But, I mean, if you can get Ben Roethlisberger in the seventh round, yeah, there's a little bit of injury worry there, but whatever, I'm fine with it. He's my guy. I'm rolling with him. I know I'm starting him every week anyway. So I'm probably not going to waste much of a roster spot on the second guy. Well, you heard it here. Matt Latofsky just said, I'm a genius at fantasy football. Breaking That's news. exactly what I said. <laughs> He's a sporting news fantasy expert. Uh, follow him on Twitter at M Latofsky, L-U-T-O-V-S-K-Y. Now, you mentioned Zeke Elliott earlier. Uh, other than him, uh, any other impact rookies? Uh, the first person that came to my mind, I thought, I thought Derrick Henry, a dude who may not get a lot between the 20s, but in the red zone be effective as far as a goal line back and get you some touchdowns maybe. Uh, anybody that, that you, you can uh, recommend or somebody that you might have on your radar as far as the rookies go, the offensive rookies go? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Henry is a very interesting guy. You know, Murray, I mean, DeMarco Murray is an interesting guy. Who knows what that guy's going to do after the last two seasons he had, mm-hmm. where two years ago looked like the best running back in the league, and last year was a guy who, you know, you're like, what's he doing in the NFL? So it's real tough for me to assess that situation until we kind of see what they're going to do. And it is, is Henry going to be the hammer every every time they get inside the five or, or how is exactly that going to play out but obviously a guy worth drafting you know some of the guys i mentioned earlier in paul perkins and deandre washington i think are definitely guys to have on the radar i like kind of Wendell smallwood up in philadelphia because it doesn't sound like they're too high on ryan matthews we know his injury history right darren sproles is there but he's, he's never going to be a lead back the problem with rookie running backs is always you know, the blocking, you always hear that. The coaches don't trust them in, in pass blocking, and that's why they can only be on the field so much. So it's really tough to invest a lot in them. But but they're certainly interesting, especially when you get later in the season. You know, there's three rookies up in Seattle. Something it happens to Thomas Rawls, T.J. Procise, and and, uh, and and a couple others. Uh, you know, and Christine Michael's still there. So who exactly knows how that's going to shake out? That could go any direction. Obviously, a situation worth watching, but you know, maybe with with, with running backs, it, it's always good to look at the second year guys. They've been in the league a year, and I mean, even someone like Melvin Gordon. I hate to say it, he burned me last year in a lot of fantasy. <laughs> a lot honors. of people, but now he's in his his second year. He's going to fall in drafts. Maybe you take a shot if you're getting him as your third running back. That's not a bad investment just to see maybe it pays off. You know, Duke Johnson's another guy I like to kind of in that role and, and just kind of see what happens with those guys because uh, you just never know with running backs. Amir Abdullah, that's another guy, too, I think fits that fits that bill uh, to a T as a guy who this could be the year. He had the rookie year, got over the problems, and now he's going to break out. And You know, it, it just all depends on where you can get them in your draft there was a there was an omission that you made i don't know if you did it purposely but um some somebody that we're used to hearing when i asked you about your top 10 earlier i don't think i heard you mention adrian peterson and uh later on in the conversation you mentioned the 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 devaluing of the running back and the the more value being added to the wide receiver um and in, in the conversation you just had about uh derrick henry and demarco murray it leads me to this like who who do you have to I know it's early, but who do you have to handcuff? Like, if you draft well, yeah. this guy, you gotta get the you gotta get the backup as well. Yeah, I mean that's by the way, Adrian Peterson. He is my number two running back. If I failed to mention him, I, I apologize. But yeah, I mean those kind of guys you probably should handcuff. To me, the big thing with handcuffs is you really only got enough space on your roster for one, maybe two. Mm-hmm. You really got to be smart about it, and I think. The major thing is when you know who the handcuff is. Like, that's what's so huge. Because a lot of times we try to guess and we think, well, of course it's this guy, right? He's the whatever. And, and then all of a sudden it's week three and the starter gets hurt and it's now, it, it's not him. Right. You know, it's not now Davis. It's this guy named Charkandrick West. No one's ever heard of. And then you, you got nothing. So you really need to know, it, it, make sure I got the right guy. And I think with Adrian Peterson, it's pretty clear it's going to be Jarek McKinnon. And uh, so that's that's probably a good guy to get. And and the other thing I think is important with handcuffs is is he good? Because even if you know who it is, if you also know that he's not that good, <laughs> right. that's a worry. 
So, you know, obviously with Devontae Freeman, we know it's Tevin Coleman, but Tevin Coleman's going to get drafted in his own right. So that that kind of hurts your cause. You know, I mentioned Mike Gillisley earlier with the Bills. To me, he's a perfect example of a guy to get. I think Chris Johnson in Arizona, who, who you know, David Johnson this year, everyone assumes, assumes going to be the starter mm-hmm. and, is, and is going to be very good. So it's like we know who they are. We know they're coming up pretty good years. And I think that makes us kind of feel better about things. And I think, you know, Jonathan Stewart, the guy you have to handcuff, and it looks to me like it's going to be Cameron Artis Payne, you know, who's a very interesting player, had a, had a couple moments toward the end of the last year where he was pretty good. So, you know, it, it's really the major guys and then and then sort of the rules I, I just outlined before that. A couple more minutes here. Uh with Matt Latovsky of the Sporting News. He's a fantasy sports, fantasy baseball, and fantasy football expert. Um, last thing I got for you before I let you go, and I appreciate your time, Matt. How do you how, how do you approach defenses? Because last year, you know, I, I try to do defense the way I do my quarterback. Just give me one until the bye. Well, last year my one was the Bills, and they screwed me royally, man. They they tore me apart. Like how do you how do you assess which defense and the same question I asked about the quarterbacks, like how how long do you wait before you yeah, well, typically go after one? It's funny, I just wrote about this today where I outlined kind of some draft strategies and some sleepers. You know, to me there's three kind of schools of thought, right? You're the dude who's like, Hey, I'm getting the best defense. Like look how badass my team is. I just got Arizona or right. I got Denver. I'm I'm awesome and that feels good on draft day, and then as soon as the season starts, you're like, ah, why? You waited a few rounds, you know. Um, yeah, you got a good defense, and that's cool. But you know, maybe you'd rather have that that really good backup running back or or wide receiver who's breaking out. But I, I don't prescribe to that theory. I'm more of the wait till round 13, 14, mm. and I'm probably going to get the eighth, ninth defense off the board. But that's all right because defenses. One, it's tough to predict that from year to year. And number two, you know, you're going to play matchups a lot anyway, and you know there's going to be a bye week where you're going to need another defense. So I'm waiting, and, and you know, you're going to find the defenses you kind of like, maybe a couple that you think are underrated, and you go go from there, and then you kind of see what's going to happen. You know, I, I don't think it's terrible to carry two, two defenses from time to time. You know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people are like, oh, man, that's wasting a roster spot. Yeah, I'd prefer not to. But maybe it's better, and uh, so that's okay if you want to go that route, or you can just totally say, screw it on defenses, wait till the last or second to last round, and uh, just try to play matchups all year. And, and something I wrote about today were the teams that look like they have good matchups early in the year, and uh, you know, I caution with that because we don't totally know which teams are good matchups. We can mm-hmm. kind of assume, we can make some educated guesses to Cleveland, San Francisco, you know, some of these teams are going to be good matchups for defenses. And I, I found like, a, you know, like, I don't know, five, six teams that have pretty good matchups over the first couple weeks. I know Indianapolis was on there, the Bears, uh, I think Philly the first two weeks, Detroit has a bunch of pretty good matchups early on. Uh, so, so you can kind of try to go that route, too, if you want. But, yeah, I'm a kind of laid back, eighth, ninth person to draft the defense. Hope I get a pretty good one and then, you know, not be afraid to play a few matchups early on. There it is. Championship. I'm already there. Ladies and gentlemen, he's from the Sporting News. Make sure you check out his stuff on SportingNews.com. He's a fantasy expert. Matt Latovsky is his name. Follow him on Twitter, at M. Latovsky. Matt, we're going to have to do this a lot more during the season if you're available, my man. I'm going to make sure I reach out to you and check with you, man, so we can uh, we can have you back and, and you can you can bless the, bless the listening audience with your expertise more, man. I appreciate you. All right, man. Thanks for having me. All right. No problem. There it is. See now, I'm I'm ready to go. You know, the fantasy experts. I'm a genius. I only need one quarterback. Just gotta pick the right one. Can't can't let it be Matt Ryan again. Well, maybe I can. You know, second year in the system over there with Shanahan. Maybe I can go ahead and, and run with run with the homie Matt Ryan, man, and and do that again. But one quarterback. Just wait on them. Wait on the defense as well. I, I, that's what I that's what I got from the conversation. I need to wait on the defense. So team, teams like the Buffalo Bills won't screw me. Maybe play the matchups a little bit with the defenses. Yeah, man, I'm ready to go. He got Todd Gurley, man. The first name out of his mouth. Feel me? It was Todd Gurley. As far as as far as uh, his top ten. Like that's wow, man. Like I guess he don't give a damn. Like you know, the Rams just released Nick Foles today, <laughs> and you know they're gonna try to go with the kid golf. 
wow, man, that's going to be a lot of eight-man boxes, man, for, for Ty Gurley, man. Hmm. Yeah, man, this dude got me thinking. I'm kind of ready now, man. But the draft of the big one Mike with Big Mike fantasy draft is not till uh, September 4th. Whatever that Sunday is following the last preseason game. That's when the one Mike with Big Mike fantasy draft is. You guys want to get down with it? Send me an email to Mike at one Mike with Big Mike dot com. That is the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E dot com. Put fantasy in the title in the headline. And what I do from there is I'll send you the invite. You're in the building, man. You can be up in there to get some some free swag and some signed footballs and things of that nature, man. It's going down real big. The one Mike with Big Mike Fantasy Football League. The question of the day that's brought to you by SportsNewsAndBrews.com, my man Rob Calloway's site, is who do you think is going to be going to have that breakout year in fantasy football? We'll talk a little bit more about this stuff, this fantasy football stuff, and uh, we've got some more NFL stuff. we got to talk about Randy Gregory and things of that nature on the other side of a break right here on the One Mike with Big Mike Show. Heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Spreaker, the Spreaker app. Make sure you download that for all your mobile devices. Also on Blastify and TuneIn, as well as my website, One Mike with Big Mike.com. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... (laughs) Sometimes, though. (laughs) You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Still here on the Hump Day edition of the One Mike with Big Mike Show. Appreciate you guys for joining me and hanging out, checking out the show. Thank you. Big thank you to Matt Latovsky of the Sporting News. He's a a fantasy football and baseball expert. He was on talking about some fantasy football, getting me ready to win this One Mike with Big Mike Fantasy League Championship. No doubt. I'm, I'm prepared ready to rock and roll got all the information i need i'm just playing i'm gonna cut this interview actually and i'm gonna post it in my interview section the interview section on um the one mic page on spreaker just go to spreaker s-p-r-e-a-k-e-r.com search for one mic with big mic.com also create your own free spreaker account as well so you can follow me on spreaker and i'll post the interview with uh, matt latovsky so you guys can hear it and rehear it and i hope i asked the pertinent questions that everyone would like to hear i was being a little selfish as well you know i had to ask my quarterback questions as far as my strategy and just picking one dude and riding them until you know try to get a dude with like hopefully one of the good quarterbacks got like a week seven a week eight bye week or, or later you know so i can just ride them until i finally got to pause and go get alex smith bomb ass or something crazy like that um <clears throat> 
Also, make sure you guys are following me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. And if you're watching the stream on uh, Facebook, facebook.com backslash O N E M I C W I T H B I G M I K E, you'll see it scrolling across the screen right now. The, uh, the uh, Facebook and Instagram information or whatnot. <clears throat> uh, what else do I need to make sure I mention? The sound off. Make sure you guys are sounding off with all your thoughts and questions and comments. If you got uh, fantasy questions, um, I'm going to try to line up another fantasy football expert, if not for next week, for the week after next, you know, to continue as people start to draft and, you know, preparing for drafts. I want to continue to update the information. You know, guys are going to get injured during the uh, during the preseason, unfortunately, and during practices. So I want to keep you guys up to date with, with fresh information. So you can sound off by calling 678 568 nine zero one one um follow me or what is it subscribe yeah do that subscribe to my uh youtube page as well youtube channel just search one mic with big mic on youtube and sub- subscribe to that situation it's like i got so many things i got to make sure i mention before i can start the conversation let me make sure i got everything out damn <sighs> all right so we started the show off talking about the NFL. And I want to continue that conversation as well because they lying again, right? They lying. I talked about Richard Sherman and uh, his conversation with the with ESPN's The Undefeated as it pertains to, like, the Black Lives Matter movement and the, the recent uh, shootings by and, and I guess, against the police, uh, some of the things that Richard Sherman had to say. But I want to talk about um, something that I'm – gonna. it's probably going to be an ongoing theme – as we as football season gets here and as we go through football season, um, the NFL and their stance and this this whole I don't know this whole m- mirage that they're trying to create on on making the game of football this collision sport, not contact, this collision sport, trying to make it safe, quote unquote. Um, and in doing so, man, they're they're giving people false information. They're lying, you know what I mean? And I, I think in in turn, you're making the sport less safe. I also got to talk about the Olympics before I get up out of here. I got to tell you guys what's going on in uh, in Rio. The title for this, this episode is A Real sh- Show, you know what I mean? And it's literally one down in, <laughs> in Rio. Uh, so, yeah. You, everyone, you know, you watch TV. If you're if you're a fan of the NFL, you know about the NFL's uh, heads up football program, right? It's a series of in person and online courses for coaches to learn better safety procedures and proper tackling drills, and that's supposed to uh, relieve moms of you know the sight and sounds of their, of their young kids, boys and girls. Because I coached a little girl one time in little league bashing their heads against one another (laughs) um the league and usa football youth football's governing body which oversees the program have sold heads up to thousands by the way this is a new york times article that i'm reading from to thousands of leagues and parents as having been proved effective they're telling them that an independent study showed the program reduced injuries by 76 percent you know how much that is that's three quarters And concussions by about 30%, a third. Now, the problem with that is there are people out here in media (laughs) that actually do their damn job and don't care about football and don't care and, and, you know, and and salivate when they they hear and see a lie. And some of those people work for the New York Times. And by the way, the New York Times probably got a little bit of a a vendetta against the, the, the league because of some things that happened prior some some reporting that was done and some back and forth sparring about the accuracy of the same thing, head injuries and concussions. Um, the New York Times found that heads up football showed no, none, zero demonstrable effect on concussions during the study and significantly less effect, less <laughs> on injuries overall. I don't know where you from, but to me, that's a lie. You know what I mean? Because the reality is one that you're that you're reluctant to accept. Excuse me. And that reality is it's football. Until the technology is available when you can put 
padding around the brain itself, whatever you put on the outside is just that. It's just outer covering. The concussion comes from your your brain is sitting in, in goo in your in your skull. And when it abruptly in a whiplash motion, it either hits another helmet or hits the ground or sometimes even just hits anything. If just the, if you're if you're if your head whiplash is hard enough, your brain will smash against the inside of your skull, causing you to get a concussion. I don't think that's too technical for anybody. I'm not the smartest dude in the world, not even close. But I understand that. And the NFL is trying to trick parents and mothers in, in particular into feeling like they can solve that they can they can uh, create some sort of resolution to that problem and the reality is you can't it's football it's, it's like a lot of things you, you there are inherent risk to it and if you choose to go about you know taking on that you know that uh that activity as an adult or even as a young adult so be it but like are you five and six years old Probably not. You know what I mean? The way uh, from the information that we're getting, probably not, man. It probably isn't the best thing. You know, flag football should probably be the move at that age. You know, the same way that soccer is out li- out long heading because you don't have to get knocked out to get a concussion, by the way. That constant boom. They call them sub concussive blows. Boom, boom, boom. So they don't allow kids to to head the, bo- the ball in soccer anymore in a lot of places. That's smart. You know what I mean? That's it's just a smart, safe thing to do and not continue to try to fool people into feeling like this thing, that this this crash test dummy-like sport, not calling anybody a dummy, but you get my point, is, is safe. And when it's not, you know, it's not about knees and elbows and fingers and those things anymore. Those things heal, but your brain is what it is. You know, once it goes, ain't no coming back. Um <clears throat> Moving on, a couple other things in the NFL real quick. Um, Randy Gregory facing an addition to his suspension, to his current suspension. He's going to be he's going to miss four games. Uh, they're saying it could be as many as six and up to 14. He's entered a, a rehab program. He's doing like the Alden Smith. Remember Alden Smith did that to try to like try to like scave off some of the trouble that he was in. Like, I'm going to stand by what I'm saying. And this kid is a kid who when, when he was drafted and before he was drafted, um, I remember doing a show talking about him and him saying that, yeah, he, he used the marijuana. He failed a bunch of marijuana, a bunch of drug tests in college. And I think he may have got uh, gotten flagged at the combine as well. And, you know, immediately people went into the bag and pulled out. Stupid. He's so stupid. And this kid's a kid who talked about suffering from uh, depression and things of that nature. And and the weed helped him. You know what I mean? Um he still was drafted high, could have been higher, of course, but his ability, the, 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 the argument was he was a second round pick with first round talent. So apparently it didn't, it didn't affect his ability to do the things that he's able to do on the football field. But the NFL is just now, this is the league, man, that is so, that gets so dug in on things that it makes, they paint themselves into these corners where it makes it so hard to come out and say, you know what? Cause it's almost like an, admi- an admission of, of being wrong. If you do that, if you say, you know what? We probably need to. We probably need to go ahead and ease up off this situation. We probably need to put some money into uh, getting some valid research done since the Fed can't do it. And see if this is something that would would help our players. Like, even if, like, I, I hate that that rationale, man. Like, <clears throat> like in Hurricane Katrina, when those, when those people had, like, jumped through a million and a half hoops to get their FEMA checks because why some people were taking advantage of it. Well, yeah, that's like, that's par for the course. It's going to happen. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like when people steal from Walmart, Walmart has insurance on it, on that, on that stuff. You know what I mean? So don't, don't tell me that it's, it's something that, you know, you gotta, you gotta start frisking people when they walk out of Walmart. Everybody that walks out of Walmart got to get frisked because certain people steal. No, those things are built into the business model. Of course, you try to you know prevent it with loss prevention and all those those type of things, but they're going to happen. You know, somebody's going to grab a, a pack of gum and not pay for it or whatever. You know, those things happen. And the same thing with with, with smoking marijuana. There's going to be people who smoke it for for medicinal reasons because their joints ache because they've been concussed in a game, and there's going to be people that just want to get high. But that's the real deal. That's the same thing with the with the stuff you're giving them anyway. 
the Oxys and all this kind of stuff. The Vikings. Brett Favre was hooked on Vikings for years. Everybody's favorite good old boy quarterback. Yeah, he's a, he's a dope head. Deny it if you want to, but he was. He's an alcoholic and a dope head. But one, alcohol is legal, and two, the 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 pills you can get them from from his team doctor, like M and M's. So you know. This thing with Randy Gregory, Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell says he won't be suspended because he changed his phone number. That's his excuse. <laughs> That's Le'Veon Bell's excuse. He changed his number so the people that was coming to test him, they know I, he didn't know they were trying to get in, t- in, in contact with him. Well, here's the thing, Le'Veon, and I wanted to make sure I checked on this. There's a rule in place about that. According to the NFL's policy and program of substance abuse, Section 1.6, location information and notice states, quote, players who are in the intervention program are required to provide the medical advisor and medical director with an address and telephone number, both, where they can be reached at all times. And the medical advisor shall attempt to notify the player using the method that is reasonably calculated to provide notice to the player in a timely manner, end quote. Bruh, you can you gonna you like you can keep ribbing people up because maybe you embarrassed of this being your situation two years in a row and people people touting you as the best overall back in the league, you know, and rightfully so, when you play, when you're healthy and when you're not suspended. But the reality is this man this rule is telling you that what you're talking about ain't no excuse. You're supposed to get them your phone number like immediately as you change it. Like that's supposed to be the first thing you do because you already in the program. So whoever whoever's advising this dude is telling this dude way like terribly stupid things. And if no one's advising him and he just he's just speaking off the cuff, you know, he's being an idiot. You just gonna have to miss them four games, man. D'Angelo Williams, if you're a fantasy guy, we talked about handcuffs in the last segment with Matt Latovsky. Yeah, D'Angelo Williams is your guy. <laughs> Point blank, period, all the way, you know. Um, but like all this, man, surrounding weed, you know, the, everybody. Oh man, we we gotta hope Randy Randy Gregory gets his life in in order. Like, what do you like? What has anyone heard or read about this kid? Like, from a legal standpoint, like any trouble that he's been into? Is he like beating up women? Is he is he like you know running people off the road or, or whatnot? What's really good? No, he liked to smoke herb, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And as someone who's not he's not a smoker, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not just, you know, uh, uh being uh an advocate because of that. It's because I read and, and I and I and I I've been exposed to different uh studies and things that, that get me to understand a guy who I really respect a lot, who by the way, you know what? I was trying last you know, at the beginning doing this show to get him more and i gotta i gotta go back to doing that my man dr sunjay gupta like not just dr sunjay gupta has, has been on the sports kings with us before but now he's a lot more popular he's on cnn got his own show and he's like a like a, a correspondent and all this kind of stuff so maybe i don't have time for the little people no more and i'm not saying that in any like disrespectful way at all i you know i understand man life is you know, life has kind of changed man but he's a guy who who changed his was willing to say i was wrong you know what I mean? I wasn't as informed as I should have been, and I was wrong about this 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 marijuana situation, this cannabis situation, man. And he's a guy who can who can speak to what I'm saying much more uh, in a much more educated manner than even me talking to like guys like Ruben Drones and other football players who 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 partake for the reasons I, I, I detailed earlier. This is a medical professional, man. He works now here. He works for CNN, but he, his, his offices are down there at uh, at our uh, Emory. Very reputable place, you know what I mean. He he'll speak to the benefits, man, of 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 cannabis and and how as it relates to uh, concussion. He, he even did a documentary about concussions, and I can't think of the name of it. Um, he did a couple, as a matter of fact, not not about concussions, but um, there was another two about marijuana, weed. I think it was weed or weeds and weed too. You can look it up on your on demand. It was on CNN. Check it out, man. You, you'll get some information, man. You, it'll be some things in there that'll pull at your heartstrings as well as far as these babies, man, and things that they're going through and how, how this cannabis is is actually helping them. Um, I told you guys I was going to tell you about Jim Brown, right? I want to take my time with that. <laughs> so I'm going to push that. 
we'll push that to Friday. And right now, we're going to talk about this uh, situation in the, at the Olympics, the Rio Olympics. Then we're going to get up out of here. It's the One Mike with Big Mike show here on Spreaker. I'm uh, on the Spreaker app I'm, as well as on BlastFi and on TuneIn live right now. And on my website, OneMikeWithBigMike.com. I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 7 o'clock. And I usually go to uh, right at 9 or a little bit past 9 most, most nights. Um, make sure you guys are listening. If you haven't, if you didn't hear the beginning of the show, if you missed the interview with Matt Latovsky of the Sporting News on his uh, fantasy strategies and things of that nature, you guys can always go back and check out the shows via YouTube, uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, also on TuneIn, BlastFi, uh, Spreaker, and the app, and my website, one mic with big mic.com. Every episode is archived right there for you. Also, make sure that you uh, take this number down, 678-568-9011. That is my sound offline where you guys can use at any time of the day if you got a stupid thought or something that you want to get off your chest holla at your boy man record me a message uh about 30 seconds or less if you can and if you can also keep them clean and what i'll do the next episode of the show whatever the following episode is i'll uh i'll play them live get them in if you get them in by five o'clock on the day of the show i can get them on that particular show you know if it's wednesday at at 4 45 i'll pull it and I get it on for the 7 o'clock show on, on Wednesday as well. So, you know, that's the parameters for that. Also, the Fantasy Football League. I know I'm giving you guys a bunch of information, but it's all here to give. Uh, Fantasy Football, you guys sign up by sending your email to Mike, M-I-K-E, at one Mike with Big Mike, uh, the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E.com. And the question for the day brought to you by SportsNewsAndBrews.com, my man Rob Calloway's website is who do you think is going to be this year's fantasy football? Uh, who do you think is going to break out this year in fantasy football? Now on to Rio. <laughs> the, the, the cruelest joke that God has ever played on America. Those beautiful, beautiful women down there. And it's full of freaking disease. Uh, beautiful people, I guess. You know, full of disease and corruption and poverty. You know what I mean? Um, here's the deal. They they put these Olympics in all these these places, these third world, not I'm saying all, but in this particular situation, this like third world type of situation in Rio where, you know, people have safety concerns. There's uh, the Zika virus, you know, the, the cleanliness of, of what's going on. Just just to give you guys a couple of examples of things that have already happened <laughs> and the Olympics are still nine days away, eight or nine days away. Bernie. Ecclestone, he's the head of Formula One. You know, the racing, he's a billionaire, right? Well, his 67-year-old mother-in-law was just kidnapped in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Friday night. And she's being held for a $36.5 million ransom. This is real deal holy field, man. Jason Lee, he's a jiu-jitsu fighter. This dude knows jiu-jitsu. He's from New Zealand living and coaching in Brazil, was pulled over by men dressed as police, and he was transported to uh, in an unmarked car and driven to two ATMs where he was forced to withdraw a total of 2,000 Brazilian reals, which is about 610 American dollars. Yeah, this is real talk, cuz. I think they, they, they talked about people in, in the airport like as the athletes got off <laughs> of the plane. It ain't even funny, but I'm just an idiot. With signs up, like, if you need help, the police, the fire department won't come. Welcome to hell. (laughs) What? Yeah, man, you must be out your damn mind. Like, that gold medal is worth, like, 500 bones, man. I looked it up. It ain't even solid gold. It's worth, like, $500. It ain't got no ice in it or nothing. And then it goes down from there. I think, like, the bronze medal is, like, seven bucks. Come on, man. I'm, I'm good, dude. I'm good on that whole situation. Um... It says some countries are currently looking for alternative accommodations outside the Olympic Olympic Village because housing is either unfinished or dangerous. Yeah, all the all the dorms or apartments ain't done. And the ones that are, quote unquote, done, the Australian lady, uh, she's the coach of one of the Australian uh, delegations or teams or whatever. She's talking about how <laughs> they they got like loose wires in there. The plumbing's leaking. The plumbing's leaking into where the loose wires are. So somebody is about to get electrocuted. <laughs> That's a, a great possibility. Like when they turn on the water and have the lights on at the same time, the water is running down the wall. 
where the lights are. Yeah, it's like somebody got to die to, for people to understand. Like this whole Olympics thing and bidding on this stuff and, and filling up the pockets of whoever's in charge, the IOC or whatever. It's ridiculous, man. This international sports thing is so corrupt and so stupid, man. FIFA and all that. Like just in just in the whole crap. Oh, and speaking of crap, yeah, it's like a it's like a lake of doo doo. Yeah, behind the uh behind where the uh, the 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 Olympic village is. Um Yeah, there's a raw su- there's a raw sewage flowing into a a river. 50 yards behind the Olympic Village. The river flows directly into the water that some athletes will be competing in, <laughs> including long distance swimmers. Yeah, you got me bent, cuz, cuz you already know. Like, like, I know black people don't swim a lot, but for those of you who do, you know when you swim, water goes in your mouth. And in this case, the water has doo doo in it. So these people will be eating doo doo. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so cool, man. You know what I mean? Like, I'll forfeit, whatever. You know, and they, look, then they got the nerve to like, they got like a record amount of condoms <laughs> in the uh, in the Olympic Village. Well, okay, cool. You got one that's gonna go over my whole body while I try to swim this river in this doc- in this triathlon. Like, yeah, like that's ridiculous. It's like you gonna give me all these condoms while I'm gonna die anyway. With, with everything that I'm understanding is going on on last night's real sports, I didn't get a chance to check it out. And matter of fact. It was on the night at seven as I started the show, but um, they were talking about it, man. They were talking about how like these these pipes are coming out of people's homes and there's raw sewage, and then when they hit the streets, they flow directly into <laughs> into the river, like where the drinking water and stuff is at. Yeah, the the government apparently promised, of course they would. Why wouldn't you? You know, you're trying to get the trying to get the Olympics. They promised to clean up the water. They haven't done it, and it's actually gotten worse. Um, here we get in the New York Times doing a damn job, right? Uh, recent tests by the government and independent scientists have found the city's water to be full of diarrhea causing rotaviruses and drug resistant super bacteria among the pathogens. Olympic Olympians will sail, windsurf, and yes, swim in this water starting August 5th. Good luck. USA, USA, USA. Government officials in the, the International Olympic Committee insist that the places where athletes will compete meet World Health Organization safety standards. I don't even know what that means. Like, I live in America, and there's people in this country being poisoned by water. Now, you tell me in a third world country, I'm supposed to just trust that you tell me the water's safe? Nah, probably not. Like, like even like to take a bath and, and like and to shower and brush your teeth and stuff. Like, I can't. I, nah, cuz, yeah, somebody done told you wrong. Somebody's told you absolutely wrong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it, man. The hump day edition of the One Mike with Big Mike show is coming to a close. I appreciate everyone for join, joining me, everyone who listened but didn't join the chat room, everyone who joined the chat room but <laughs> but didn't listen. That's not what I mean. <laughs> that's not where I'm going with that. But if you, if you participate in the show, I appreciate you as well. Um, just to clean up a little bit. Cato June is coaching at Howard. What did I say? Hampton. One of those black schools. He's coaching at Howard. So big up to him. Oh, Cato moving up in the ranks. We're going to see Cato, man. He's going to be one of those dudes, those Rooney Rule dudes in a minute, just getting token interviews for no damn reason in the league here in a second, man. Real cool guy. Um, <clears throat> what else did I want to make sure I mention? Uh, make sure you check out the archived episodes of the show if you missed any of it on Spreaker, the app. As well as one mic with big mic.com and blastfy.com and on TuneIn and iTunes and YouTube and iHeartRadio as well. Um, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Like my Facebook page, please. Facebook.com backslash O N E M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, One Mic with Big Mike on YouTube. Take this sound off number. Number six seven eight five six eight nine zero one one. Use that any time of day. If you guys want to just call, leave me a thirty second or less message. You'll hear yourself on the following episode of the show. If you get it in by five o'clock on the day of the show, I'll definitely make sure I get it on the show for you. Uh, if it's worth it, now like put some thought into it, man. Like like be a human being. Um, also, shout out to my guy Rob Calloway, Sports News and Brews. Dot com. Make sure you check out the website. He's got the one mic 
with Big Mike Banner on that joint as well. I think it's clickable so you can get to the show and the archived episodes from there as well, man. Um, Till Friday. Friday, by the way, Terrence Mathis, former Redan Raider. Oh, where did Terrence go to college? I don't remember. But he went to high school here in the metro Atlanta area at Redan High School. Played a bunch of years with the Atlanta Falcons. He's going to hop on and uh, talk to us about, you know, what's going on right now as far as camp. You know, um, he got a son that's playing football as well. You know, see how he feels about all this concussion stuff. Being a former player, he's married. Got a beautiful wife. How his wife feels about the about the youngster, you know, getting into football like his dad and so forth and so on, man. So we'll do that on Friday. But until then, y'all be safe out there. And I hope to see y'all and y'all hear from me on Friday. Have a good one.